Hello everyone, and in this video we're going to be looking at the legendary legion Lurtz's Scouts. Hello and welcome to the video guys, I'm Top Table Steve, and in this video, like I said, we're going to be looking at the legendary legion Lurtz's Scouts. If it's your first time here, please do click the subscribe button, and if you also click the bell, you'll be notified when we release new videos. We have loads of Middle Earth content in our back catalogue, and we're always producing new Middle Earth content, so you'll have loads of stuff to get your teeth stuck into. Also, if it's not your first time here, please do click the thumbs up button, the like button. It really does help the videos, and it keeps us producing content going forward and giving you guys the content that you want to see. Okay, so let's get stuck straight in. As you know, guys, the new book, The Quest for the Ring Bearer, was released this week, and we all got our hands on it, and we couldn't wait to flip through those pages. And one of the really nice plus points was the Legendary Legions that we got. They are awesome, I think we can all agree. One of the ones that caught my eye the most was Lurtz's Legendary Legion, which is why I'm doing this video. He's one of the most iconic characters from the trilogy, even though he was only in the first movie. And in our game especially, he's become a big favourite of the evil players, and especially Isengard players. So the Legion itself has a pretty basic army composition. We obviously have Lurtz, we have Ugluk, and we have Mauher. They're your three named characters. You can take an Uruk Scout Captain uh, with the options for a bow, a shield, and a two-handed weapon. You can take an Urukai Scout Drummer, and you can take your normal Urukai Scouts with the normal upgrade options. So it doesn't sound like there's anything special in this Legendary Legion, but just wait till we get stuck into the special rules and what the special rules do for this army. So your Urukai Scout, he is the stalwart of this list and he is still pretty solid to this day. The profile's hardly changed over the years. You know, you've got a Fight 5, Strength 5, Defense 5, Urukai. These have always been formidable opponents to come up against and now isn't any different. If anything, they're getting better with the rules that they have access to in this legendary legion. So like I've mentioned, one of the options for your Urukai Scouts is the option for an Urukai Bow. Now an Urukai Bow only has an 18 inch range. The benefit of an Urukai Bow is it's strength three. Yes, strength three, you heard me right. It's basically the same strength as an Elven Bow, just with the shorter range. But if you fuse this together with the options that Urukai Scouts have to move quicker, you could close in on that range pretty quick, a lot quicker than you can normally with any other army. So these bows are gonna be deadly. Also in the list, you have the Urukai Scout Drummer. Now the Urukai Scout Drummer is something a little bit special, especially for the theme and flavor of Urukai Scouts. With the drummer, you can choose to drum at the start of your move phase. And what it does, basically, it is like Heroic March. So it adds three inches to infantry movement, five inches to cavalry movement. But we're not going to go down that route or anything because there is no options for cavalry or monsters or anything in this list. So you're adding three inches to your movement. So you're now becoming move nine on your basic six inch movement. This is massive, this is unlimited. There's, it's not like you need to use a might point to do it. You can do this at the start of every turn. The only downside is just like March, you can't charge on a turn where you've used this rule. We call it a downside, is it really? It's gonna get you around the board pretty quick. It's gonna get your force where it needs to be a lot quicker than it would normally. You're gonna get there before your opponent or either that you're making your opponent burn through their might early to match your movement, to get to objective, etc. So it's pretty powerful. And what we'll do uh, later on in the video, we'll come to how this drummer becomes even more powerful with one of the special rules. So onto the heroes, we'll start with the Urukai Scout Captain. Fight five, strength five, defense five, two attacks, two wounds. And Courage 4, he is a sturdy, sturdy profile. He also has the options for the bow, the shield, and a two-handed weapon, like we said. Um, it, it's pretty mega. There's a lot of things you can do with it. There's a lot of ways you can go with it, but it's a solid, solid hero. And being a captain, he has access to march. Not that you'd need it if you've got the drum, um, but having it there is something else that just is another string to your bow, if you like. We'll talk about the heroes in reverse order of how I rank them in this list. So we'll start with Ugluk. Same baseline as the captain, but he has march, strength, and strike for his heroic actions. He also has a special rule, which is the head taker. Now, this is a very good rule. Basically, what it means is once the force is broken, Ugluk can take a friendly model, which is within two inches, and basically kill his own model. And what this does, it makes him pass any courage checks in that turn. His standfast is increased to 12 inches, and it also covers other heroes. So it's a good, solid 
rule. It's pretty situational, um, but I think it, it's a nice rule. It's very thematic, but it's also very useful in game. So my second choice of name characters would be Mauher. Pretty much the same stat line again, except he gets one extra attack. He has heroic march and heroic strength, and no special rules as such. Now, anyone who's used Urukai Scouts, uh, Mauher especially, will know of the fact that you can turn anyone in Mauher's warband into a Marauder for the cost of a point, and it increases their move value to eight, just like Mauher's move value. This is great. The benefit of it in this list, you get that for free. It doesn't cost you a point, and it's not just limit to his warband, it's army-wide. So basically, every model in your army can move eight inches if Malher is in your list. Please think about that. That's massive. Add that to the fact that you may have a drum in your list. You've got your eight inch base movement plus three. That's 11 inch movement when you want to march. With the drum, you're marching quicker than cavalry can move. This is the main reason why Malher is second choice and almost a must take in this list. Obviously, top of the pile is Lurts. You have to take Lurts, obviously, in this Legion. Um, he is Fight 5, Strength 5, Defense 6, 3 attacks, 3 wounds, and Courage 5. He has access to March, Strength, Strike, and Challenge. He also has an Urukai Bow, and you get a shield with him for free, which I'll come to in a moment. Final Halflings is a pretty awesome rule. In any scenarios that you play where you have to roll to come on the board, it, and it's determined by a dice roll where you come on, Lurtz basically chooses where he wants to come on, or it's as if he's rolled a six, which is fantastic. So that's Lurtz and his whole warband. And considering that he can take 18 warriors with him, and you're getting to choose where they come on, that is a really big benefit in any of those scenarios where your opponent is getting put anywhere and everywhere or somewhere that he doesn't want to be. You can make the decision to back up an existing warband that's already came on, or you can use that to maybe jump on a smaller or weaker of their warbands uh, who's isolated on one side of the board. That is not to be underestimated, and I think that's a belting rule. So the Legion itself has three special rules. One of them we have already touched on, which is when you include Malha, uh, you get to turn all your scouts into Marauders, and they can all move eight inches, which in itself is massive. Another special rule for this Legion is a worthy foe. And basically what this means is Lurts can call a heroic challenge on any hero on the opposing force. Normally with Heroic Challenge, you have to choose a hero who is of the same tier as the challenger. Um, Lurtz can do it on anyone. So he can, he can pick on the minor heroes, he can tie up the big heroes, he can do it on anyone. And the other thing is, if that Heroic Challenge gets declined, he gets the might point back. But obviously the person who declined it still gets the negatives to, to declining. So it means that any heroics they call for the rest of the game or until Lurtz dies, uh, he cannot call with me. Heroic combats, uh, other of his uh, friendly models in that combat can't move with him, which is great because Lurtz can call heroic challenge just to mess up any plans from heroic moves or heroic combats that your opponent has. It's a fantastic rule. The other thing to think about with this is Heroic Challenge, if they do accept, you can pick on minor heroes, smaller heroes. If you kill them, you get D3 might back. That D3 might can take you beyond your starting level. I mean, Lurtz can potentially get up to five or six might, I think, if you do it, play it right. It's crazy. Lurtz becomes a might caddy. The third and final, and for me, the most cool, most thematic, is shield throw. So once per game, Lurtz can use his shield as a throwing weapon. He can throw it at strength four. If it hits, it immediately knocks the target prone, and they take that strength four hit. It's crazy good. Can you imagine Lurtz running in it from eight inches, charging someone, throwing his shield on the way in, striking them, knocking them on the floor, taking a wound from a strength four hit, and then having double strikes against them? This is going to be massive. This is going to be so cool when it comes off. I can't wait to do this on the table. So a sample list that around 600 points for me would look something like this. I'd obviously have uh, Lurtz in Lurtz's warband. I think at this point I can get a 11 scouts um, with shields and a third bows um, and one carrying a banner. And then I'd have Merhur's warband and they'd have 12 again with a third of those bows, the rest with shields. And then Ugluk's exactly the same warband. And I think, if I'm not mistaken, that's around 600, I think maybe a couple of points shy. And then going up or down, um, the ones that I want to keep in that list is Lurtz and Mauher because that eight inch movement for me is key. It's massive. 
It's what's going to make this list stand out above everything else. The whole army can move eight inches. If you have the drum in there, which, oh yes, the drum, obviously I'd have a drum in there. I, I wouldn't leave home without a drum um, just to give that extra movement and be able to just put myself where I need to be on the board. Um, this is a great list. I've already started painting up. I've got some of my um, scouts painted up from when we've seen Uglux Scouts uh, Legend of Legion, which was pretty cool. I've started painting them up. I have uh, visions of a 750 point army of Lurtzy Scouts. Uh, let me know, have you guys uh, theorised any list for Lurtzy Scouts? I'd be really interested to know. I'd really be interested to get a conversation going about this list because I think it can be pretty, pretty deadly. Yes, in some ways it's quite one dimensional, but I think what it does, it does exceptionally. And I think it's just gonna crush a lot of armies that come before it. Magic could be a problem. Um, but you know, with the bow fire as well, you know, it's it's going to be something. It's going to give your opponent a lot to think about. I don't think it's even though the the composition is quite small and you don't have a lot of options. I think the options that come within each unit um, of your base units makes to makes for a very exciting and mixed up list. Uh, so let me know. Let me know below. Do write your list in the chat if you, if you wish in the comments. Um, I'll have a look at them. I'll go through them. We can have a discussion about them. That would be great. That's what I'd really like to do with these videos if, if we're discussing army lists and legions and things like that, is to get the conversation flowing, throw some things back and forwards. There might be some things that you guys have thought of that I've not or vice versa, and it'd be great just to uh, bounce some things off each other. Let me know if you did like this video. Let me know if you want to see more reviews or looks at legendary legions, because I'd be happy to do them. I've had a lot of fun looking through this and theorizing my list. Um, although this is probably one of the easier ones to theorize, um, but do let me know and we'll get something going. It's been great to do this video. Uh, it's been great to get in front of the camera. Again, it's been a few days. Um, I've been really busy at work. So yeah, I liked it. So let me know what you guys uh, think. If you did like it, give the video a thumbs up. Please stay tuned for a little message from my compadre Jay at the end of the video. And guys, stay safe, please, and keep washing those hands. I'll see you very, very soon. Take care, people. Thank you for watching this video. We hope you've enjoyed it here at Top Table Gaming. We love bringing you content that you are going to enjoy. So don't forget, check out everything else on the channel. Have a bit of a look around before you disappear and watch your next video. We've got everything from unboxings, product reviews, battle reports, and everything else in between. So do have a good look around. Now I do want to, before we carry on, give a huge, huge shout out to our patrons, which you should be able to see on screen. Without them, we couldn't do any of this. They help us fund the lights, the kits, the studio, and everything that is helping us create content and push forward for you as a channel. We don't hide the content behind a paywall, but we do have benefits such as free dice and free t-shirts for our patrons as a way of us giving back as well as regular giveaways. So if that sounds good to you, do go and check out the Patreon page, link in the description below. And before you guys head out, make sure you head over to the Top Table Gaming community on Facebook. We've got over 1,500 members now, and it is such an excellent community that you should totally be a part of. Check out these videos on screen now, and until next time, enjoy your hobby.